702. The Big Interview with Bongani Bingwa. 17 minutes after 7 o'clock. Deal or no deal? Give us 500 million rand or get the top. These are the explosive allegations made by the former chair of Productivity South Africa and CEO of Tuja Capital, Mtunzi Mdwaba. He says three ministers approached him with regards to a five a five billion rand deal he sought to secure with the Unemployment Insurance Fund. They asked him for 10% of the value of the deal, an amount of 500 million rand. When that didn't happen, he says he was booted out of Productivity South Africa. And he says he was approached through intermediaries seeking a bribe. And he joins us now live in studio. Welcome to 702 Breakfast and thank you for your time. Thank you and good morning. Thank you for having me. For our listeners, perhaps just give us a bit of background. What is Productivity SA and what was your role there? Productivity SA is an entity that is created uh, by virtue of the Employment Services Act. I think uh, Section 31, 32 of the Employment Services Act, uh, together with many other entities that are under the Department of Employment and Labor, as it's now called. Um, Its role is to contribute to the creation of employment, is to contribute to the retention of jobs, is to contribute to the competitiveness of the country. Um, And really what it does is intervene um, in areas where there's trouble. For example, if there's operational inefficiencies, you'd want Productivity SA to come during the COVID, uh, when the UIF spent 64 billion trying to um, get the economy going, get jobs going, Productivity SA would come in to ensure that people are doing things in a productive manner. So this deal, right, that's the reason you're here. What was it and what did it offer? I wouldn't say what it was. I would say what it is because I have a valid agreement that will be honored and I will make sure it is honored, uh, signed on the 18th of December 2022. What it is, the Tuja Parallel Universe ecosystem is built out of an appreciation by me as a labor expert over the years and the experience as an entrepreneur and as a leader of the employers all over the world, which I did in Switzerland for about a number of years, that we need to create employment in a very unorthodox manner. We've tried doing it pre-financial crisis crisis, the global financial crisis of 2008-2009, in which I was also involved at a multilateral level because I was in the United Nations and the ILO uh, pre-COVID. But our numbers have just been going up, going up, going up throughout. And then I recognize that the UIF is like water and electricity going to run out of money. This was pre-COVID. This was four and a half years ago. And at some stage, I even thought I was crazy. And I said to people, no, but if you look at the UIF, it only makes its money from contributions from people that are employed. So the more unemployed people you have, the more it will run out of money. So it's not just, it's a double jeopardy situation. We have unemployment, sure. to, and then you have also no money. So how did, you, how did you seek to change this? by putting together this ecosystem that is uh, based on eight sectors of the economy, um, aquaculture, agriculture, renewable energy, um, the uh, financial uh, industry, the health and pharma, construction and property, um, arts, culture and science, and then telecoms, uh, media and and fiber. And by doing so to recruit from the 700,000 or so um, unemployed people that are on the database of the UIF currently, we have 700,000, but that's low-hanging fruit. That's the first bite. The second bite is the over 6 million people that are on the database of the Department of Employment and Labor. And why that's the second level is because you need to do more work there because you've got about 70% of those people not even having high school qualification. I'm quoting now from some of the literature around this, and it says it's sought to, quote, redirect workers who've been retrenched into other absorptive industries by analyzing their skill levels, retraining, coaching and creating sustainable businesses, cooperatives and SMMEs while incubating and hand-holding them in a value chain managed and controlled by the ecosystem, end quote. Critics would say that's exactly the kind of, I don't know, gobbledygook speak one <laughs> writes in a, prof- in a proposal that doesn't really offer much value concretely. Yes. So, you know, I think we have a challenge as a country and as a people of Africa. I think when concepts are brought about by black people and by Africans, they tend to be laughed at and scoffed at. But if you look at Facebook, uh, you look at Google, they came up as ideas, as concepts. Uh, If you look at Discovery, which today is one of the largest uh, insurance companies you have anywhere, um, funded by RMB many years ago, that's the same thing you would have said. But I know what Facebook is. I know what Google is. I know what Discovery is. I've asked you what this was, yeah. and I suppose 
the follow-up and question you've to that it is, for me. was it worth 5 billion rand? It is worth much more. So maybe, maybe let me make an example to assist. So the IDC has 5 billion rand coming from the UIF currently as we speak. They've had it for the last two to three years. The IDC creates one job for 350,000 rand. If you do your math, you will know that that then calculates to just over 14,800 workers, sustainable workers, right? Now, my model, just one project, two projects, three projects, I'll let it give you very quickly. One is the Tukela Lifestyle Project, in, which is the medical tourist project in the Mandan municipality in, in KZN. It's a presidential catalytic project, mind you, which is quite interesting. We will spend $150 million in it. IDC, DBSA have already committed to fund, but they won't fund till I fund. For $150 million, we will create 14,000 jobs, just why, one. Why through your your company and not say through productivity SA? Because productivity SA doesn't do that. This is actually a thing that people are missing. So when people talk about a conflict of interest, I'm saying that's rubbish. It's absolute rubbish. There is no conflict. Productivity SA does not give money to anybody. Productivity SA does not go and physically create a job. It enables the creation of a job. It enables the retention of a job. Shouldn't it? No. That's not what it does. That's not its mandate. Its mandate, especially now, where there's going to be, there's supposed to be, by the way, when the name changed of the department in 2019, the idea was to change it from Department of Labor to Employment and Labor. How do you respond to the suggestion that your company was set up just days prior to this proposal being inked, that you were probably not even that registered at the time? So I've been asked this question so many times. Let me respond again. So Tuja Capital was registered in 2019 at the time that we applied for for the funding in 2022 about so you a were week, set up specifically to get this as funding? a special vehicle no the special vehicle for the uif to cure the unemployment and to cure the contribution by the uif and to save it having to make money so that we convert people as you rightly said into it from non-absorptive industries to these ones but what we then did a week before we always plan to have a, spe a spec a special purpose acquisition company right but after we'd had interface with the idc and the idc told us they love us to bits and it results with them what we we're doing except for one thing they said we're not so sure about a listing we decided to register a holding company the week before so this is a holding company that was Wh registered when week this before. thing was inked were you even uif registered but you can't be for a, pro a project like that it's new so you're not registered for tax, you're not registered for UIF, you're not registered for anything. As some people have asked, why don't you charge tax? How can you charge tax when you've made no money? So let's talk about the bribe. You say you were approached through intermediaries. Mm -hmm. what, was, what was the deal? What was said to you? Well, I think it actually started without an intention, well, certainly with the people I met. I don't think it started like that. But these were, some of them were contacted through friends who wanted to facilitate, were saying, what is the problem? Everybody believes in this project, but what is the problem between you and the minister and everybody else? And I said, I have no clue. And then when we met, they started telling me about things that were sort of perceptions about me and having appointed the president. I helped appoint the president to the Global Commission on the Future of Work in Geneva a few years before for the celebration of the 100 years of the ILO. Then I said, look, guys, let's find a way to make this work, let's clear the perceptions. Then all of a sudden they said, no, their principals are saying, take care of this, pay 10%, because I said, but why? They said, no, you know, these guys, some of them know they're not coming back next year after the election. Some of them are retiring. Some of them are desperate. So I said, but that's what nothing to do with me. That is money that should go to the bottom, to the people. If I take out... That's a bribe, right? It is a bribe. They say, they call it gateway fees. Did you go to the police? No, I didn't. Why? I have no intention of going because I don't trust them. Did you see what happened to the Minister of Transport a few days ago? We can't even protect our own ministers. Did you see what happened to this Justice Zondo uh, 54 hold weeks on, ago? Hold on, hold on, You've got a project of this magnitude. You yep. say you've got an, a deal that's been inked that yep. you say remains valid even as we yep. speak this moment. Yep. It's not getting any traction because you are accusing certain people of trying to solicit a bribe. You don't go to the police? No. Why should I jeopardize the lives of my friends? I'm responsible for my life. If something happens to me, that's okay. But if something happens to people that I love who were trying to help, who ended up getting caught in you a would situation understand, like this. You would understand that for the duration of this interview, you have not clearly stated what this project was really actually going to do, why it was worth 5 billion rand. You then say that you were approached for this bribe. This is, of course, for somebody who already has a checkered past. You were declared a delinquent director. 
uh, you've had a number of issues raised in terms of your own conduct. Do, do you understand the picture think, all of this paints I about you? I think what you? is important, because we have a limitation of time and you're making very sweeping statements that I can't respond to in a very short while. People must listen to my Sunday World podcast. People must lit, listen to my interview with Newsroom Africa that I did yesterday. People must also listen to a podcast I did with Dudu Msomi on me as a person and who I am and what I do. Or you could I just think, tell us now. No, because you've got five minutes. And, I, I mean, you, you, you keep, questions. Yeah, but you're you managing me. You're managing me within five minutes. You quoted what you believe the, in, the, the the project is and you quote it correctly I, and, but you say it sounds like a joke so I'm saying to you that's because maybe I'm a black person I'm telling you that's what it's meant to do I'm a labor expert final I've question. run uh, no no final let question. me no no, 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 no final question this. but have you ever heard of a company called Talk IT yeah. that I built that I built in 27 Which countries you were booted out of as a result Talk of IT po- Talk IT when you when, when I was that, never when you were Talk IT. that deal with the Kelly group when that soured no, one no. of the things you had I to do I built Talk IT and then Talk IT was Final sold. Question. No, Talk IT was sold yes. into the Kelly Group. And then Talk when IT, you were booted no, out of the Kelly no, Group, you Kelly had group to leave your position as CEO. Because I had a disagreement. I had a disagreement with the guy who was the CEO who didn't want me to be the CEO without listening to him ah, and him managing me from the back. So, but so Talk IT. Question. No, no, here's but Talk IT. No, no. Let's make here's a distinction. A I need, I'm not going to answer a question do, without responding. Why Talk don't you IT, do no. what the minister Talk is doing? No, for the record. Take this thing on review. Go find relief from the courts instead of rubbishing these ministers in a series of interviews for, without for, providing for the any record, proof. Talk IT is a company that won Cisco Awards every year for seven years. I won Businessman of the Year twice in 2009. You can't rubbish that. You were I still was, booted I it, out. No, at, at Kelly. I fought with Which Kelly. Bought and and I wasn't IT. booted out, by the way, in an arbitration that I was going to win. We were advised by the arbitrator to settle. And we settled and they paid me a lot of money. You probably have no idea of this. They paid me many, many millions to go away. I had a choice. Could I go back? And I said, I don't want to go back to a toxic environment. And I think even when I chaired the UWC board, every time I come across some ugly people that I boot out myself, that I've gotten rid of, every time I clean up, people have a problem. Every time I speak up, people have a problem. And quite frankly, people can say whatever they say. Even this delinquency, by so the way, I'm was about not you. calling a Meeting. Simple question. Yes, what is a, a simple, simple question? question? What is the question? Why not take this process on review, which is precisely what the minister is doing, instead of rubbishing these people through media I think, interviews? I think there's two things that you are treating as mutually exclusive, and I think that's the problem with the thinking with the interview like this. And that's why when you have 10, 15 minutes, it's a problem. Because you are saying, why don't I go on review? I don't need to go on review when I have a valid agreement. Look at the legalese of this. Legally, I have no business going to review anything that is valid. Why would I go to court? I said to court, I have a valid agreement. I've come to review it. The minister is the one who must review it because he's an unlawfully hijacked everything because of his greediness. And when you say, why am I rubbishing? I'm not rubbishing. I think rubbishing is a negative connotation that is not healthy for people who are listening to your program. I am telling the truth. I am sharing what has happened. I am sharing it because it clears my conscience and I feel great right. about it. Just That's not it. with the people who can do something about it. Tunzim Dwaba is the CEO of Tundra Holdings, joining us in studio with these explosive allegations.